you know, AI could do Prime Minister's Question Time for me every week, <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Bill and I are here in Imperial College London, where we've been meeting some of the UK's top innovators in clean tech. Now, the UK is a world leader in technology, and in particular, it's an AI powerhouse. So today, we're going to be interviewed by an AI. All right, let's go. How do you think technology will impact the global economy and job market in the next 10 years? Well, we clearly need to be more efficient. There's a labor shortage, you know, in healthcare and education. If you go to the low-income countries, they never have enough doctors, they never have enough teachers. You know, hopefully technology, like the one that generated this question, can help us uh, be more efficient. What's the most important piece of advice you've ever received and how has it influenced your career and approach to life? Ooh, um, I, probably one of the best quotes someone gave me when I started out was, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And I thought that was, that was a nice way to think about your, your life. And it doesn't mean you should be soft, doesn't mean you can't take tough decisions and be firm, but I think it means treating people with decency and kindness and empathy. How about you? I've had great advice. You know, Warren Buffett talked about, uh, you know, in the end, it's how, you know, friends really think of you and how strong those friendships are. Uh, that was great advice. Uh, Richard Feynman was a scientist, and he always said, it's good to show your confusion, because if you let yourself sort of pretend to know something, then your thinking gets sloppy, and eventually you kind of uh, won't be able to, to figure things out at all. And he was always so good at, did he personally understand it? Had he worked through yeah. the examples? So being tough on, uh, you know, do you really get things, that's been super helpful to me. Yeah, right. What's next? <laughs> Okay. Okay. If you could go back in time and speak with your younger self at the beginning of your career, what advice would you give yourself and how would you approach your work differently? Well, I was kind of overly intense. Uh, you know, I only, I didn't believe in weekends. I didn't believe in vacation. Uh, you know, it meant that I, there were a lot of people who probably could have helped me that just didn't fit in because I had this very narrow view of the working style, the talking style. Uh, and for the small early Microsoft group, that was okay. But then as we got bigger, I had to realize, okay, as you get sales teams in, as you get people with families in, uh, you know, you've got to think <laughs> about this. It's a very long-term thing. So I was a little too, I was very intense on myself, and I tried to apply that to other people. And so I'd, I'd help myself get, realize that uh, a little sooner than I did. On my end, I think, I mean, it's, it's similar, actually related to what you said is, I think you, I, you know, I came from a kind of immigrant family and mentality <laughs> was just keep working, keep moving on the next thing and trying to get ahead. And I think actually over time I've come to realize you've got to live a little bit more in the moment. Bill, what's the one thing about your job that you wish AI could do for you? <laughs> I don't know, sometimes when I'm writing notes and I want to make them clever, uh, I want to put a little drawing. I'm not very good at drawing. But now that I can just type in, you know, take this photo, change it this way, change it this way, I've been using it, you know, to write little poems and songs and things. And uh, I admit to people that I actually got help from the eye. I don't try and, <laughs> and cover it up because otherwise they think I can write songs on the spot. <laughs> I think... Uh you know, AI could do Prime Minister's Question Time for me every week. <laughs> that would be great. We have this thing, which I don't know if you know. It's so every week I go. Yeah, to yeah no, it's famous. It. It's, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Infamous. Infamous. Every Prime Minister kind of says the worst part of their week. So um, if I could have some AI avatar deal with that for me every week, that would be great. <laughs> Question. Okay. Looking to the future, what gives you the most hope for the world and what actions can individuals and governments take to create a better future for all? Well, fortunately... In the face of all these problems, uh, we have human innovation. You know, climate change, very daunting. The number of things we have to change, the speed, uh, you know, the inequity still in the world where even though we cut child to death from 10 million a year to 5 million a year with things like Gavi that delivered vaccines, you know, still 5 million is too much. But we're inventing new vaccines. As bad as the pandemic was, it accelerated vaccine science at places like Oxford, uh, they're working on a malaria vaccine. Uh, so my optimism and hope is that we've got more people being educated all over the world. 
Uh, we've got more sharing of information. Young people want to work on the tough problems like inequity, like climate. Uh, and so I think, you know, even though it's daunting and, you know, the economic cycle is challenging us right now, uh, I think, you know, the future is very, very bright. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. And I've talked about that here, actually. And we, we've created some new government departments, uh, actually, recently. And one of them is a Department for Science, Innovation and Technology. Because I agree, like you, that those are the ways that we can solve the world's biggest challenges and, and make sure that we leave a better world behind us. And the thing that really gives me hope, though, is the humanity that I've seen from the country over the past few years as a senior politician, first during COVID and then more recently during Ukraine. You know, just seeing how people can come together to support each other to get through a difficult time, open up their hearts, open up their homes, and be there for each other, is actually something that you know, should fill us all with hope that we will be able to deal with whatever comes our way and get through it. Yeah, right here at Imperial, they're coming up with ways of killing mosquitoes. Uh, and we can save 400,000 lives a year if we can uh, kill mosquitoes to help us get rid of malaria. Yeah. So uh, we're in a, a place of uh, fantastic innovation.